It was uh, two years ago in Athens when Tallinn won the right uh, to hold this Congress. But now the big question is who will be the next one? And we have three candidate races. We have the Bucharest Half Marathon, we have the Hans Christian Andersen Marathon and the Great Batumi Night Race. We will hear their bids. They each have 15 minutes and we will hear the bids in alphabetical order according to the city's names. So first up, the Great Batumi Night Race. So, I wonder where the triplets are. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much uh, for this very warm welcome. Um, this is Frank. Frank is the race director, so he is dealing with all those police issues. Uh, I'm the race director of the Great Batumi Night Race. And uh, let's go just here with our uh, little video clip. Many thanks for this very warm welcome, and it's a good feeling to be received again with, uh, in such a familiar way. So one question, dear friends, did you ever Google Georgia? <laughs> maybe it sounds like a strange question, but if you Google Georgia, maybe 99 or even 100% of the results refer to the US state of Georgia. Yeah? However, I would like to speak about Zakatvelo. This is a real true Georgia, which is a small but very proud state, which is located at the very eastern end of Europe, right in the middle of the Caucasus Mountains. There is actually, from our point of view, uh, hardly another small country that has so much to offer. It's an unbelievable hospital people, a very changeful history, breathtaking landscapes, so the country is about as big as Bavaria, or a very small country, but they have uh, peaks uh, of more than 5,000 meters, eight peaks of more than 5,000 meters, and uh, they have the Black Sea coast, and uh, that invites to practically all sporting activities. And beside that, they have the very wonderful and sports-friendly food. And there is running, yeah. maybe not quite as much as in other countries, but there is a delicate plant, actually, that has broken through the ground, and we would like, with our race, uh, we would like to cultivate this plant and to turn it into a big and beautiful flower. And that is the reason why we consider it to be essential that we are member of AIMS, because AIMS and to be member of AIMS is uh, for us a really important issue to create a really high quality and uh, a race which uh, considers the uh, quality that we want to have as the quality that the uh, runners expect from us. So, uh, and therefore we are in the uh, region of uh, the Caucasus Mountains with uh, two races which we are working for. It's beside the Great Batumi Night Race. It's the, um, the Tbilisi Half Marathon. Uh, so these two races together represent um, 
an important and interesting part uh, in, of races in the Caucasus Mountains. Uh, our race, uh, the purpose of the race is to promote running, which gives people a clear, very clear incentive to actively take responsibility uh, for their health. In the first issue that we had in uh, Batumi, we did have uh, 560 runners. Uh, that may sound, uh, I'm pretty impressed by all these participant numbers that we've heard today. So 560 seems to be kind of zero. Yeah? But uh, Georgia is a country of Olympic weightlifters and great chess players. You know, that is something you have always to consider. And therefore, we think that these 560 people are quite a noteworthy number. Also, we lead kids to running. This year, we had about more than uh, 100 really excited uh, kids. Also, we support the tourism. And uh, each year, uh, we try to support, or we do support, uh, one carefully chosen uh, charity project. This year, we have raised about 4,500 Georgian Lari, which equ equals about 1,800 US dollar. Uh, also, there are actually... Um, some very good Georgian runners participating also in the Olympic Games, and we want to give them or to, to offer them a good platform to, um, to um, promote themselves and the sport of running. Um, but all this, as you can imagine, needs time and work and patience. Uh, uh, and therefore, we would like you to support us uh, to make, uh, to develop this nice, flower, the running flower, so to say, professionally, and to mode uh, running with all its great benefits and sustainability. So we would like to ask you to come to Georgia, and I think I will not say anything else. According to the quote of the French philosopher Voltaire, he said, the secret of being bored is to say everything. So be curious, learn and experience all this yourself. You will really be surprised, I promise that. And so we look forward to seeing you in Batumi. Sakat Velo is calling. Thank you very much. And then, uh, so Frank will give you some uh, facts about Georgia, about Batumi, and about the race. Here we go. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, yeah, as Alpha mentioned, I'm Frank. I'm in charge of the course. Um, what Peter already said is that we are a proud member of the AIMS. So that was one premise for us um, as we organized the event that we are able to meet the quality standards of AIMS, uh, which we uh, did. Um, we had run about 550 runners coming from 35 countries, um, which made the event very international. And we also had 100 um, children. So yeah, um, one out of five or one out of six participant was a child, which is a very, um, very good for us since one of our purposes was to bring uh, running as a sport to a country to the country of Georgia. Um, to give you a short um, introduction about the race course, since Batumi is not such a huge city, it's pretty easy to cover the whole <laughs> city and all the uh, sightseeing and all the monuments um, with one uh, by one half marathon course. So you start next to the sea, then you run to the airport, which is run about five kilometers away, and then you go back to the older parts of the town do some circles, um, do, um, run some corners, and then go back straight to the finish line via the boulevard. So it's pretty, um, and it's very flat. We only have an elevation of 21 meters, so it's rather a fast course. Um, and the um, course record is 65 minutes, which uh, is not international standard. So uh, we are trying to improve <laughs> the next years by bringing more and more experienced runner to Georgia. Um, one of the characteristics of the race is that it's, as Peter already said, it's a non-profit charity event. 30% of all the um, participation fees um, goes to a charity project. La um, this year it was an, um, a charity for um, autism children or an autism organization. Um, further, it's a platform for local runners and for the Georgian youth um, um, in order to bring them to the sports of running. What Peter already said is that Georgia is a small country. It's right in between a sandwich of um, Turkey, Russia, and Iran. Um, although it's in a probably yeah, um, very complex <laughs> um, geographical situation, it's a very um, safe and secure country. So don't worry about that. 
Um, the capital is Tbilisi, as aforementioned. Um, it's a um, mainly Christian country, and it's in, um, developing from an economical perspective. So, um, and it's a visa-free regime with, I think, for 94 countries, so don't worry about um, going to Georgia. Um, for those of you who want to spend some days or weeks um, uh, and doing holidays in Georgia, it's pretty easy. Um, you have many UNESCO World Heritages, and you have lots of, you have the mountains, you have the sea, you have wineries, so there's a great diversity in, um, yeah, doing your holidays. Um, and what Peter already said, um, the Georgian cuisine is world class. So it's uh, unprocessed food, organic food coming from the countryside. So make sure when you come to Georgia to check out the local food. And um, yeah, I simply jump over it. Now we want to show you a short um, video again. It's about the city of Batumi. Just one minute. Just to give you some, this was the nice and beautiful um, yeah, video about Batumi. So what you can see is like a mixture of um, yeah, an ancient Georgian town in Las Vegas. And it's uh, pretty nice since it has an international airport. So it takes us only 10 or 15 minutes from all venues. And the event would be um, from the 23rd of April 2020 to the 26th of April, so the last weekend. Um, in April 2020. Um, further, we had some arrangements where one is the Colosseum Marina, which is headlining sponsor for our race, and the other one is the Hilton, where we would have the Congress. So uh, you would stay in either one of these hotels, which are uh, internationally um, high quality standards. So, thank you very much, Didi Madloba, <laughs> for hearing our presentation. Thank you. The great Batumi night race. Next up, a uh, bid from the Bucharest Half Marathon, please. Hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, your attention. And um, yeah, we are uh, presenting uh, the bidding for um, the next uh, Congress in uh, Bucharest, Romania. It's a new destination. And um, first of all, I would like to tell you what I bring as, um, as the idea. We got the inspiration uh, of uh, uh, this bid for the next Congress, uh, thinking uh, and talking about uh, Romania and how, how to promote Romania abroad. Uh, and especially from, uh, for, from a man who migrated from uh, Romania. His name is uh, Fred Libo, as uh, you know for sure. He moved to United States and he started, uh, we believe, what was the real boom of running uh, that affected years ago the United States and then Europe and then Asia. So we took the inspiration from uh, Fred. Uh, we. Uh, are said that is not with us anymore, but uh, we said yes, we should uh, go for it. Um, I give you uh, some short information about my experience and uh, the ones from uh, the brought by Valeria van Groningen. She's the president of uh, the Booker's Running Club, who organizes a few events in Romania. 
Uh, my name is Paolo Ottone. I'm uh, inside uh, the AIM since uh, 15 years, I think, with uh, two races uh, I organized in Italy, like Maggiore area, Piedmont, north of uh, Italy. Uh, I'm um, a measurer, grade A, uh, since 15 years also. Uh, so I've been measuring many of uh, European races. Uh, I've been working uh, for the Olympic Games in Sydney, 2000, taking care about the sponsors um, from the Czech Olympic Committee. I was working in uh, Turin, 2006, as a venue manager for the ice hockey. Afterwards in Doha at the Asian Games. Um, and then I started to uh, work and uh, uh, finalized the idea we had with uh, Valeria in uh, 2007. She was running the Prague Marathon. Ah, yeah, I was also the race director of uh, Prague Marathon uh, events until 2007. Well, she was running the, the half marathon and uh, then we knew each other and we said, yeah, we should start something also in uh, Romania. So we did. Uh, we were supposed to start in 2007. We did start in 2008 with the marathon. But uh, the bid uh, we would like to uh, present is um, regarding the Bucharest Half Marathon, uh, who started in uh, 2012. Um, yeah, Valeria, just a few words about Valeria. She's bringing um, more uh, her expertise in, uh, in professional uh, sports. She won a gold medal in a single skull in, um, in the uh, Olympic Games in Los Angeles 1984 and uh, many other medals. I'm not telling you everything, otherwise we, we take too long. But uh, she brought in the passion and uh, her very, uh, very strong uh, will to uh, do something nice in Romania. So we did start. And um, yeah, we said yes, uh, we, we are preparing our bid in Bucharest for uh, May 7 and 9, 2020. You can go with the other slide, please. I didn't see it. Uh, well, we started uh, to found uh, first the Bucharest um, Running Club uh, back in 2007, uh, where we settle uh, our um, goals to promote sport, to promote a healthy lifestyle in uh, Romania, uh, who produced uh, many champions in sport in many, many disciplines. But uh, running at that time didn't really exist in Romania. And uh, so we started uh, to, uh, to, to, let's say, establish our club, which is um, basically organizing uh, three events. The main one is the marathon uh, in, uh, in the fall. We started in 2008. We had um, very few runners, 900. And now it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an event to exhausting 17,000 uh, runners. Uh, then followed by the, the Booker Staff Marathon in uh, 2012. We had a fairly good number of uh, participants that year, 6,000. Uh, but now we have uh, 16,000 runners uh, uh, this year, uh, this year edition. Then we had at, um, another event, which is um, also part of the AIMS, which is a 10K, which is uh, uh, held in uh, April. Um, a little bit of history uh, of uh, what we call it the eclectic city. They call it, um, they call um, Bucharest the a little Paris <laughs> because uh, we had um, in Romania a big influence uh, a while ago uh, from France and from those kind of uh, very stylish uh, lifestyle. And um, it's a city that um, it's, it's a really a new destination uh, now. And uh, it's a city, I can tell you, that is wishing to um, change uh, uh, people's mind about uh, Romania. Uh, it, I, I can assure you as uh, half Italian, half Swiss, that the first time I was traveling to Romania was back in 2007. I was also skeptic a bit, but I can tell you that I feel uh, much more um, unsafe uh, in my hometown village, which has 300 inhabitants uh, in the Alps, Italian Alps, between Switzerland and Italy, than uh, in Romania itself. So I was also um, amazed about the, um, the high level of uh, education of uh, people, and especially young, uh, young uh, people in Romania. So I was really impressed. Um, well, 
the loca um, location of uh, Romania is a uh, center of uh, Europe, uh, as you know, uh, very easy to reach from any, any country in Europe, but also international destination. And um, it's served by um, the main airport, uh, which is the Henry Coanda uh, Airport. It's plus minus 30 minutes uh, away from uh, the city center. And um, it's also very well connected, um, meaning uh, Bucharest um, to the uh, center of Europe by train, highways, uh, and everything else. So it's a very um, destination, very easy to be reached. We created an event logo, which is including, uh, to tell you very, um, uh, very quickly, uh, three landscape in uh, Bucharest. Uh, one is the, I start with the, with the last one, the Parliament House, which is the second uh, biggest building uh, in the world after the Pentagon. Uh, was uh, called and is still called by everyone, uh, Ceausescu Palace. Um, so it's, it's really amazing. I can tell you the first time you see the palace, you just are shocked. Uh, Paco was, uh, was there last year, and I tell you, it, it's really amazing how, how it, big it is, the palace. <laughs> Uh, then is followed by the Basarab uh, overpass. Uh, uh, it's a, uh, one of the biggest, um, let's say, um, engineering um, uh, project in Europe. And then we have the Romanian uh, Ateneum, which is uh, 120 years old and is sitting just in front of the uh, official hotel we will uh, use for the, for the venue. The accommodation, uh, Hilton. Palace, it's in Bucharest, city center, and it's right in front of the Atheneum in Bucharest. It's the official hotel of uh, our races since the beginning, Valeri, if I'm not wrong, since 2008. So we do have a very good uh, relationship uh, with the hotel. Um, the price uh, for rooms are uh, from 100 to 120, 25 per night, room, meaning room. So uh, it's a very, uh, very quality hotel. It, they, they host uh, many, many uh, conferences uh, during the year. Uh, and it's always very busy. So the quality is guaranteed uh, in terms of uh, spaces, services, and especially rooms uh, service in Bucharest. Um, we do have, um, as I was saying, uh, the main uh, main um, conference uh, room is uh, 300, over 300 uh, square meters. They have a uh, lot of rooms uh, available. And uh, they recently, this year, op opened the second Hilton uh, Hotel in the city center. So in addition to this one, we will have also the, the second one, which is brand new, just opened it. Uh, we do have a um, uh, lot of spaces uh, in terms of uh, extra rooms for, uh, for the Ames family. Uh, so for the, let's say, the, the side, uh, uh, let's say, uh, activities and meetings from the Ames board. So we are also ready to host this one. Uh, transportation, uh, as I told you before, uh, there is uh, an international airport, Eric Coanda, and uh, the majority of um, uh, the airlines in Europe, uh, but also international, including uh, many, if not all, I would say, uh, low-cost uh, companies are flying. Uh, so it's a very well-served uh, airport, and uh, he was winning um, last year, I think, yes, uh, or two years ago, the prize for uh, the best airport for this size of airport uh, in, uh, in Europe. It's a very modern airport, expanding very much. Uh, transport and travel, um, regarding visas and um, formalities uh, to enter the country, um, well, Almost, uh, if not all, uh, European countries can enter the um, uh, Romanian soil with, uh, with no visa, so just with the ID. Uh, but also um, other, other, other countries can enter uh, uh, Romania without any problem to get the visa. It's a very easy, very easy process if, if it's needed. Um, then, of course, we will um, provide, as every, every Congress does, uh, the transportation from the airport to the city center. And uh, to all the activities we will organize, uh, meaning the side, um, side um, activities, meetings, and uh, galas, etc. Uh, plus, of course, we will have uh, the welcome uh, at the airport, of course. Well, I hope to see you in uh, Bucharest. Uh, 
as I was uh, telling you, um, I'm, I would like to give uh, just a, a few um, a few second minutes uh, to Valeria to just say hello before uh, we head with um, with our official movie. Hello, uh, hello everyone. Um, I uh, expect you to come in 2020 in Bucharest. If not for the Congress, come to Rouen because uh, it's a very nice uh, city. The course is flat. Um, it's not a big marathon, but it's a very nice one. I run a lot of marathons, but I still like the, the smallest one. It's more cozier and I like it very much to, to run in a, a smaller uh, marathons in the world. So welcome, and uh, I hope you see you in 2020 in Bucharest. Thank you. Thank you very much, Valeri. And uh, before we, I, we, we go with, uh, with our official movie, I just wanted to, uh, to say thanks to Ames uh, to uh, welcome us from uh, 2008. Uh, to welcome uh, the other races I organize uh, because it's, it's, it was very important, I can tell you, for the um, local politicians, especially, uh, talking about a little bit about the topics uh, we were uh, discussing before, to have um, AIMS as a, as a guarantee of a, of a big value we were bringing to Romania and to Bucharest. It was a very heavy weight, I, I can tell you to be placed on uh, on discussion table with the institution. So thanks very much. Thanks again, and uh, we hope to see you in Bucharest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so, our last bid. Welcome, Hans Christian Andersen Marathon. Yes, hello. Dear President, Vice Presidents, Board Members, dear Delegates. My name is Torben Simonsen, and I am the Founder and Race Director of Hans Christian Andersen Marathon. I'm very honored to be here with my team to present our bid for the Ames Congress 2020. As a 14 times marathon finisher, I had a dream back in 1999. The dream was to have an international marathon on a fast and closed circuit with international elite runners in my hometown, Odense. The race was named after Hans Christian Andersen, the world-known fairy tale writer who was born and grew up in Odense. My dream came true, and this year we will arrange the 19th race still the fastest in whole Scandinavia. Over the years, we have managed to set new standards for running events in Denmark. Together with our partners from the city of Odense, the National Olympic Committee, Sport Event Fyn, and the region of Southern Denmark, we wish to give you inspiration for your own races from our experiences, partnerships, and organization. Through our successes, we have developed a motto, if you can dream it, you can do it. My next dream is to share our race with you in 2020. It's now time to hand over the mic to my good friend and long-term member, Erik Mogensen, who will motivate our bit. Thank you, Torben. There are 5.6 million Danes. 
and we have several times be voted as the happiest people in the world. <laughs> Denmark is the land of running and has a long history and tradition for running, for fun, to keep you fit and at good health. Every year, more than 2,000 races take place all over the country, from races with some few hundred participants in the small villages to several races with more than 15,000 participants. Denmark is also a country with strong participation in organized sport. The government and our leading sports organization have created a vision called 25, 50 and 75, with the, aims, with the aim of having 75% of all Danes doing sport on a regular basis, 50% of them being members of sports clubs, all of it by the end of 2025. We invite you to come to Odense in 2020 to learn more about the progress and the vision of 25, 50, 75. As our guest in 2020, you will be met some very, by some very experienced organizer. Our partner, Sport Event Fyn, has more than 20 years of experience in hosting international sport events, like the World Championships in Trampoline in 2015, the World Cup Final in Archery, and this summer, the Triathlon Multisport Festival with five World Championships in one week. Several times over the past couple of years, Denmark has been voted as one of the best uh, countries, host countries in the world of sport events. One of the reasons is our innovative approach, as seen at the World Championships in Half Marathon in Copenhagen, when a mass event was created together with the championship and more than 30,000 runners participated on the same course. The legacy is now the ha Copenhagen half, and you can actually come around and see them because they're here today. There are still more, more than two years for us to get new ideas and be innovative to present for you in 2020. It's very easy to get to Odense. It only takes one and a half hour transportation by train from either Copenhagen or Bilund Airport. The two airports are served on a daily basis by all major international airlines or alliances with easy and quick travel for all participants. Your host city in 2020 is the third largest city in Denmark with a population of more than 200,000 inhabitants and it's growing fast with more than 2% a year. The city is right now t undertaking massive changes and reformation. Um, and more than 4 billion euro is, is invested in housing, shopping centers and infrastructure. The transformation is driven by strong focus from the city in developing uh, our strong clusters in robotics, drones and welfare technique areas we will be happy to share with you in 2020. Much innovation is secured by close collaboration between the companies, the university, and the city's many other educational institutions. So in 2020, you will meet a vibrant city with an international and young atmosphere. It's now time for me to hand over the floor to Morten Olstrup, from the Convention Bureau Inspiring Denmark, with whom we have worked closely together for this bit. He will present the venue, the Congress packages, and the sites in Odense and Denmark. Thank you. Well, thank you, Eric, for uh, this handing over. As he says, we've been working closely together throughout 2018 on this bit for the Ames Congress in 2020. 
and I represent Inspiring Denmark, where we work to attract international congresses to the region of southern Denmark. And can I borrow this? Thank you. As Eric said, I would be presenting the venue for the Congress in 2020, which will be Odeon, which is a state-of-the-art uh, Congress and concert hall opened as recently as last year, uh, with 30 meeting rooms and space for over 1,700 persons. Odeon is run by the Radisson Blue Hotel just next door, uh, which has more than 35 years of experience in hosting international congresses. So, Despite the new facilities, it's safe to say that you will be in very experienced hands. Now, one great advantage of the Odeon is that it's situated right in the heart of the historic center of Odense. So it means that everything is close by, including the train station, which is just 400 meters or a five minute walk from Odeon and the hotel. For the Congress, we propose four meeting packages, two for single-room accommodation, two for double-room accommodation, including three nights and breakfast at uh, three hotels, where one is the Radisson Blue Hotel, the other two Windsor and Asgar hotels, and they are also just five minutes from the train station and a ten-minute walk from Odeon. Um, they, uh, the packages start in price from 470 euros, and of course, the packages also include the participation fee in the Ames Congress uh, with lunch and coffee breaks. We'll have a welcome reception at the City Hall of Odense, uh, sponsored by the City of Odense. We'll also have a farewell reception, which is sponsored by the local organizations Developing Fun, Sport Event Fun, together with the Hans Christian Andersen Marathon. And of course, uh, despite the close proximity of the hotels and the venue to the train station, we will arrange transport uh, from there of you and your luggage should you need it. And of course, we wish to see you join the Hans Christian Andersen Marathon, or if you prefer to run a shorter distance, you can do the half marathon or the last 10K race. <laughs> and yeah, now you've heard the name Hans Christian Andersen mentioned several times over the past few minutes, uh, but Odense is really closely associated with the famous writer, and uh, you'll also see that in the many museums dedicated to his life and work. But actually, Odense is a very old city, founded by mo or for more than a thousand years ago by the Vikings. And this is also reflected in the old buildings in the city and the historic neighborhoods. But as Eric said, uh, it's also home to a large university with more than 30,000 students and many other educational institutions, so it means that there is always a lively atmosphere in the city. So you can come and experience in two years' time both the cozy cobblestone street with the colored wood frame houses, but also a vibrant big city atmosphere with cafes, events and festivals. And Odense is the biggest city in the region of southern Denmark. And uh, southern Denmark uh, was also where the company behind the famous brick, the Lego brick, was founded and is uh, still situated. And this is also where you find the original Legoland Park, as well as the recently opened and quite fascinating Lego house. Uh, we're also renowned for our many old mansions and castles, uh, where perhaps the most famous is the Eskog Castle, which is just a short drive outside of Odense. And actually, not many people know this, but Denmark has just as long a coastline as Italy has. So we are really closely linked to the water, and uh, you can experience that by swimming, by sailing, by bridge walking, or perhaps spend time in some of the many cottages in the nature along the coast. And of course, capital city Copenhagen is just one hour, 10 minutes away with the train where you can go and experience the famous Tivoli Gardens, the Little Mermaid, or the colored New Harbor houses. And now I'll hand the floor back to Torben to finish this presentation with some final closing remarks. Dear delegates, I hope that you have enjoyed our little presentation, starting with my dream. We have focused on creating a bit where you see is what you get. And I can guarantee, guarantee all of you that we and our partners will do our utmost to organize and host a top quality Congress 2020. Remember our motto, if you can dream it, you can do it. I dream that I will see you all 
in Odense in 2020. Thank you.